I saw you're talking about Vancouver and I saw the CIBC report that came out uh, from Benjamin Tall and, and about 30. So this is a national number. 30% of first time buyers get help from parents. The national average is about 82,000 for the amount of help uh, for those who get help. Vancouver, of course, leads the country <laughs> and the average help being one hundred eighty thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, well, and it it kind of makes sense if you look at those baby boomers that are sitting on their real estate. Their real estate's gone through the roof. Mm -hmm. They've got either the ability to pull money out of it through a HELOC of some sort, or they've sold it and downsized and got a, a bit of a cash windfall from it. So it's logical that they see what what's going on and and want to help. Um, but yeah, the, the the size of the help is is it's massive, and your average you know, your average family, it's just it's not. People aren't like, oh yeah, no problem. I'll just give my kid hundred eighty grand. It's a it's a really large, um, really large number. And so there's, you know, even like Vancouver starter condos are five hundred thousand dollars. If you wanted to be downtown Vancouver in the year, like that's you know to make that work on a mortgage as a young person with a you know you're just starting your career you'd have to put down a reasonable amount of money to make the cost of it all work. And it's like, well, where's that money coming from? Either you got something from your parents, um, like I said, or you're an entrepreneur or some sort of, um, you know, role in life that, that's, you know, you've done well early or um, you're, you're kind of locked out. Right. And, and, and I think that the vast majority of those people are, are locked out. Right. And uh, you've shared a bit about your entrepreneurial journey. Because to me, what entrepreneurs do is they find problems and try to solve them. And this seems to be the, be the path that you followed is you're trying to apply technology to to solve problems. So we, I guess we've talked about the problem that re, that is real estate. Now, um, I don't know where to start, but yeah, tell us about Addy. Tell us about this current business that you, you guys started. How long ago, how long ago did Addy start? Um, we did. We started in late 2018. Uh, but we really started in 2020. So we did, so when I moved home from um, Asia in 2016, um, like I said, Mike and I had done, you know, had some real estate um, and had done reasonably well with it. We started dabbling in investing in other types of opportunities, essentially becoming LP investors behind real estate developers. And an opportunity had come our way to, Actually, this this one specifically came through Mike's Mike's way, and um, long story short, the opportunity looked great. It was a developer who was going to buy or had bought three houses on Oak Street in Vancouver. The goal would be to rip those three houses down, and you could build twenty five or twenty six townhouses. I can't remember the exact number. And they were raising a little bit of money from high net worth accredited investors to be able to participate in the opportunity. And so the developer said, you know, minimum check size was a million dollars. If you wanted to participate, <laughs> you could make the projected rates were, I don't know what it was, 25, 26% IRR. Um, <clears throat> so a, a, attractive rates, but obviously, you know, early, you know, investing in developments is higher risk, but the opportunity looked good. Mike liked it. Um, the developer said it was a minimum of check of a million dollars. Mike asked him if it was okay if he set up a corporation and put a few friends money into the corp and the corp was the investor, essentially a small syndicate. And the developer said, that's fine, but I you know, only want to deal with one person. I don't want to deal with a whole bunch of investors. And so um, Mike did that. Mike texted me and a couple others and said, hey, here's this opportunity I've got. Um, explain the details, shared the deck. Um, so myself, Mike and a few others participated in that opportunity. And one of our employees at the time in our other um, tech company wanted to participate and he had $10,000 that he wanted to put into the pot to make as part of the million. And so the developer said the minimum check was a million. Mike had messaged everybody when he was putting it together saying a minimum check size for his syndicate was, would be $50,000. And so this employee who wanted to put 10,000 in essentially was told no. And um, he didn't really take that lying down. Um, he got, you know, kind of fired up about it and mad. And he was like, look, I'm, I'm making 20 basis points with this money sitting in my whatever RBC bank account. And you guys over here are able to invest in real estate at this 25, 26% projected IRR. Like, it's just not fair. Like $10,000 is a lot of money. Why can't, how, can I, how come I can't get the same opportunities that you guys are able to get just because the dollar amounts are different? It doesn't make any sense. 
And so that conversation is what got us going down the path of, well, there's costs involved. You know, a $10,000 check or a $100,000 check is cost the same to process that investor, you know, signing the paperwork, lawyers, notaries, whoever's touching the deal. And there's costs involved to do that. And the conversation got to the point where we're like, maybe there is a way, maybe we can use technology to drive those costs down to make it where small, you know, lots and lots of smaller checks, smaller investors could participate in the same opportunities that high net worth accredited investors are able to get access to. And so we set out to prove that that idea was, was true. So what we did is we put, um, we built the first version of our software and we bought a single family house on the east side of Vancouver, backs right under Trout Lake. It's an awesome location. And then we put that property on the platform and basically we put it out to, to Canadians and said, hey, are you interested in investing in a specific property, a specific address for a small dollar amount? Um, as little as $1 you can invest. And um, the goal for us was just to, the, to prove the concept to figure out like, are, were we nuts? And this was a, the, like not a good idea and doesn't resonate with people or would this resonate, would it work? Are people interested in making these smaller investments into specific addresses? And the overwhelming response was, yes, people do want to do that. We have 305 investors in that first property. The smallest is a dollar. Um, and those investors now own a slice of that specific property, that specific address. And so we took that as a win that it validated that the idea was possible and that people did want to do it. And so then we took all of 2019 and a good chunk of 2020, essentially building out the business, the business model, the software, the team, the board of directors, um, and came back to market with a, what we thought was a scalable plan of how we can do this at scale and um, make, it, make it work. So we took a lot of our learnings from that first property, what was good, what was bad, what didn't, you know, didn't work as expected, what were the questions people asked? What were the challenges that we had from a, I don't know, a credibility point of view? What were some of those humps that we had to get over? So we worked on all of that for 2019 and yeah, like a good chunk of 2020. And then we relaunched back to the world with the second property, which was a single, a single commercial unit in Chilliwack, British Columbia that has Starbucks Canada as a tenant. Um, and so it's a brand new building that was built with a drive through for Starbucks. Starbucks was already in on a long-term triple net lease. The building was brand new, a year or so old. And um, we were able to get in on that opportunity and we put 833 investors into that specific property. And that was sort of our kickoff of um, launching the, you know, launching back into the world with, with you know, properties that people are already, you know, able to invest these small dollar um, amounts. So people can invest a dollar up to $1,500 into each property that we bring onto the platform. So Stephen, how much, how much uh, in dollars did you raise from the first and the second properties? The first one was just a one point six, these are round numbers. 1.6 million was the first. That was a nice uh, house the then, proof, huh? The proof of concept. Well, it's Vancouver. So it's, uh, oh my Lord. It's, it's, it's yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that was 20, 2018. Remember, um, <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, I mean, this is a half the problem like that, you know, that's, it, that's, uh, it's out of whack with what, what is actually affordable. Um, and so, yeah, so that was that. And then the, the Starbucks property, I think we're 550, $560,000 into it. Something like that. <laughs> I thought the, I thought the dollars would be reversed. <laughs> I thought the commercial would be higher. <laughs> no. So that was one of the, the learnings is we come in. So we'll come in as a limited partner. So there's a general partner that is the person, you know, buying the property, managing the property, dealing with the tenant, building the building, um, fixing it up, doing, doing all sort of the landlording work or building, if, there's, if it's a development, building the actual property, we come in as an LP. And so mm -hmm. we're a limited partner. And so generally a general partner puts together their plan and what they're going to do, what the, what the deal is and what the opportunity is. And then they go and raise some money from high net worth accredited investors. And so usually those limited partner LP slices are broken down into minimum check size. Sometimes minimum is 500 grand, sometimes it's a million, sometimes it's 5 million. And so you, if, you're, if you've got the money and you like the opportunity and you're a credit investor, you can cut a 5 million or 500,000 or million dollar, whatever it is, check into that opportunity to, to be part of it. And so what Addy does is um, we come in as that limited partner, we'll take down 
we'll make an, a, an arrangement with that um, general partner and we'll take down that slice. Let's say it's 500 grand. We'll chop that $500,000 slice into $1 increments, put it onto the platform and enable you, me, our members to be able to invest 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 500 bucks, whatever they want up to a $1,500 limit. So our goal is to enable thousands and thousands of Canadians to participate in these opportunities for small dollar amounts. And these, you know, these opportunities are generally reserved, if not always reserved for the wealthy. You know, that, that Starbucks property is normally traded between one, you know, wealthy individual to another, or, you know, a big REIT selling it to another one, um, or a big, you know, developer buying it. And, and so your average Canadian just doesn't even know these things are transacting. They're generally off market deals. And you wouldn't even know if that was your Starbucks that you drive through the drive through every day, you wouldn't know that it changed hands from one person to the next overnight. Um, and so what we did by, by enabling those 833 investors to participate, I think the neat thing about it is like 63 of them live in Chilliwack. So now these Chilliwack residents are able to own a slice of this brand new building that has a, you know, a Starbucks Canada tenant and be able to participate in the ownership of that. So these people are getting quarterly distributions or quarterly dividends out of that property. The property's already done three dividends. So when a dividend comes out or distribution comes out from the general partner, our software then distributes it to the investors based on their ownership slice. So that money then shows up in their, in their Addy wallets and then they can either move that money back to their Canadian bank account or they can choose to invest in whatever property is coming next. And are these properties financed? Like uh, uh, yeah, a part of my generally. ignorance, like the single family home for 1.6, is there still a mortgage on that? <laughs> there was never, so that one, no, there's no mortgage on it. And again, that was like the proof of concept for us doing a proof of concept property, doing a single family house. We did that all on, on purpose because it was something we could test and we could test quickly um, and we could kind of control it. Mm -hmm. um, one of the learnings that we came out of that from it is that we wanted to be a limited partner. We don't want to be the general partner. We, mm -hmm. we, we, we want to be able to just uh, participate on the, in the capital stack, enable our community to be able to participate. Right, right. And so to answer your question, yes, each property generally has some leverage or a mortgage on it. So the Starbucks, um, the Starbucks does, um, it's. I don't know the exact numbers, um, but the general partner agrees to purchase the building, uh, you know, gets the mortgage, gets approved for the mortgage, puts the mortgage on it, and then figures out how much equity is available, how much does, did they want to own, and how much are they going to enable investors to be a part of. Mm -hmm. But, but sometimes these properties, be, there's... Those details would be the, on the offering memorandum, then, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 So, so when this, we this is all highly, very transparent. This, is, this isn't... <laughs> yeah, I think that's one of the neat things about what we're doing is... The, if you don't know a lot about how this whole world works, I, I think using Addy as an opportunity to learn is a is a great way to, to think about it, where you can read the offering memorandum, understand the details of the deal. Understand, it's a specific property. You're not investing in a fund. You're not investing in a whole bunch of properties. It's either you like that Starbucks in Chilliwack, that building, or you mm -hmm. don't. Mm -hmm. Right. And you like Chilliwack and you like the tenant, you like that it's a commercial building and you, you, you know, you like that it's brand new or those things don't line up for you and you don't invest in it, but you can invest and then you could literally put a dollar, $50, whatever it is that you're comfortable with. Um, and investors can make their own decision, make their own investment decision based on their personal experience and their personal investment knowledge, read the OM, the offering memorandum, and then decide to get involved. But as part of being involved, they get to, they get to literally be the landlord without doing any of the landlording. So they mm -hmm. get that distribution, they get to see the quarterly reports, they, they get to be a part of it. And I think there's a lot of cool education in there for people to, if you, if you don't know what it's like to invest in, you know, institutional grade commercial real estate, we, we enable everybody to be able to participate in that, which I think is pretty special.